Hi, welcome to our Wild and Wooly very first 3x3 three three virtual theater challenge. I'm Bethany Stillion of Rough Magic Shakespeare Company, and our tech wizard making the magic happen is the amazing Mike Blau. So, um, our purpose in bringing this to you is to allow theater artists, whether playwrights, directors, and actors, to keep their skills sharp and their creative juices flowing and to continue doing the live performances that really are their life's blood during this sort of twilight zone of a time uh, in a world where live in-person theater is suspended indefinitely. Um, so, and we wanna give our theater lovers the new live explorations of the human experience that have been a foundation of human civilization as long as there have been humans. That's right. I said it. Save live theater. Save the world. So, um, you can get involved. Uh, we are taking audience prompts now for the next event. So you can find Rough Magic Shakespeare Company on Facebook. And um, whether you're uh, just a theater lover or uh, involved in any way, you can send us prompts for our playwrights to write brand new uh, works incorporating your ideas and you get to see them come to life through the fevered imagination of various playwrights. And if you're an actor, a director, or a playwright, and you're interested in being involved, please message us, Rough Magic Shakespeare Company, at uh, on Facebook, and uh, we'd love to have you get involved. And of course, to support our theater artists in these challenging times, and uh, bring more live theater like theater live theater events like this to life. Um, please uh, feel free to donate whatever you can afford. Um, every dollar is cherished. You can donate at paypal.me slash roughmagicshakes. And that, um, that link is on our page as well on the event uh, description. So um, every, every dollar helps. Thank you. Okay, so uh, tonight's event titled um, Dysfunction Junctions is a mini festival of plays by Greater Daytona area playwright Michael J. Urban. He claims Chicago for his hometown but currently resides in New Smyrna Beach with his wife Valerie and three dogs. Once, he tells us, he had to jump out of a second story hotel room window half showered. He assures us there was not a girl involved, but there was a motorcycle. Tonight's collection of plays presents a similar combination of the intriguing and the obscure. So, um, without further ado, we're going to bring our first guys in to share um, our, our very first work. So first up, we're going to have Jordan McBride and Terrence Van Auken in a piece directed by Bo Wade. In addition to a burgeoning acting reputation, Jordan is a brilliant musician. You can check him out on his regular live Facebook feeds showcasing his evocative piano stylings. And uh, a native of Queens, New York, shout out to Queens, Terrence is the co-founder with Carrie Van Toll of Thank You Five, a theatrical venue producing plays you're unlikely to see anywhere else in Volusia County, as well as live stand-up comedy, open mic nights, murder mysteries, and who knows what all else, and a gracious co-presenter of this evening's crazed events, Check them out at thankyou5.org. And now, two old friends meet for a Zoom lunch in Wednesday. Jim? Jim? <laughs> 
This is amazing. You look great. I heard yeah, a lot of uh, were dead. Yeah, reports of my demise were... Uh... <laughs> Holy shit. I, I couldn't believe it when you invited me to this Zoom lunch. It it's like our old Diner Wednesdays, right? Yeah, but without the greasy spoons. Uh, Jim, I, I can't believe it. Uh, so, how you doing? I'm doing uh, well. I'm doing uh, quite well, actually. Well, you look... <sighs> Um, alive? <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that too. But, uh, but, but different, you know, you, you, you look good. Uh, I, I think maybe it's the hair. I mean, you're not sporting the Don Draper look anymore. No, I gave that up. How are you? Me? I am great. I'm crushing it. Uh, I'm the new national sales manager for uh, Halifax now. You're the uh, national sales manager for an auto group that sells cars in Florida. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we sell online. We ship out of state. <laughs> I'm just trying to be funny. Uh, you know, I always got a kick out of uh, titles. So, what about you? What about me? Yeah, what are you doing these days? Uh, writing. <laughs> Freelancing. Writing. writing. Uh, what, uh, pitches? Uh, I don't know, what, what kind of writing? Scripts, mostly. Scripts? What do you mean, like Shakespeare? I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's, is Broadway even relevant these days? I think so. I... Uh, I'm not doing anything on Broadway, though. It's still somewhat new to me. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I still think theater's relevant, though. Yeah, you know. I mean, screenplays make sense. I mean, uh, everybody's trying to get into that game. How'd you get into it? Well, I'm not really in that game. Not yet, anyways. How's the money? I'll bet there's some serious money in it. I imagine so, but I'm not in the money. Not yet. Seriously? I mean, you're not in the money? Who's paying you to write these things? Nobody. <laughs> I'm not in it for the money. That might come one day, but right now I'm still working on my chops. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? What are you doing, man? I mean, I'm just asking as a friend. Uh, what are you getting out of it? Fulfillment. Full fucking fulfillment. <laughs> now, isn't that all warm and fuzzy? Well, you know what? I I'm happy for you. As long as you're okay with it. But I got to tell you, fulfillment is not going to make my Corvette payment. No? No, it won't. <laughs> I didn't want to ask you something. What happened? With, with what? With me or with the agency? With all of it. I mean, I called up there one day and uh, they said you were no longer with the agency. They wouldn't give me any information. I, I couldn't get a straight answer. What happened? I just walked out. I had enough. I didn't want it anymore. Just like that. You just walked out. Well... I sense that it wasn't exactly an amicable split. Just like that. As far as amicable goes, I, I had to do it. Hmm. And now you're writing scripts. Or fulfillment. You know, you helped me. I, I mean, you helped me a lot. So l l let me help you. Come work for me. I'll give you a good position. I'll put you back in the money. I appreciate that, Tony. I really do. But um, I'm good. Okay. I mean, I had to put it out there. So, uh, 
Uh, are we going to eat lunch? I mean, how do these uh, Zoom lunches go? Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> well, look, I'm buying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I'm uh, working on a new script. <laughs> oh, yeah? What's it about? It's about uh, two guys that meet on a Zoom lunch. And that was Wednesday with Jordan McBride and Terrence Van Auken. Um, next up, we have another piece directed by Betty Mitchell. Betty, I am going to say out loud, is one of my dearest lifelong friends and a consummate trooper, which in the theater world is the highest possible rank. Uh, an Atlanta-based actor, director, and theater maker. She really misses live in-person theater, don't we all? And is delighted to th have this opportunity to work with Rough Magic Shakespeare and make some live, if not in-person, theater. Uh, she's directing a, a friend of hers joining us from her hometown of Atlanta, Kate Guyton who has been spending her time during lockdown working, gardening, lecturing her mom on the severity of the virus, and enjoying the occasional meltdown of her simple things, such as misplacing a hair clip. Priorities. Here, Agent 003 reviews her life choices in Not-So-Secret Agent. They say you only live once, so chase your dreams. Seemed like solid advice at the time. Damn valedictorian. No one ever said someone would be chasing me. 003 to Z, come in Z. I should have just stayed in drama. I can... I could have just played a spy on TV, and I'd be poolside right now with champagne and caviar being pursued by the studios. Well, that's a little something you left out of your commencement speech. Like what to do when the Russian mob is hunting you down. 003 to Z, come in Z for crying out loud. All right, all right, get your head screwed on straight. You're not in Hollywood. You're in a Motel 6 utility closet. <laughs> These guys are everywhere. Oh, great pep talk at the mission briefing, too. I should tell you, be careful. Doesn't exactly cover it. The Russian mob will be hunting you down to cut bits off you until you tell them everything you know and or die. Now, that's a little closer. Z, you... They say there's lessons to be learned in every mission. Like, always triple check your two-way communicator wristwatch before getting trapped in a Motel 6 utility closet with Russian mob goons hunting you down. 003 to Z, come in for Pete's sake, Z. Oh, yeah, um, I'm out in the cold, Z. Yeah, the mob's hot on my trail. Oh, no, no, I, I can't sh shoot them out like last time. No, 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 I can't. Just remind me uh, never to leave my gun locked in the hotel safe. And to always order the steak. Come on, Z. You gotta get me out of here. If I can get to a safe house, all right? You put the directions in the secret compartment. Okay, okay. In the car. Um, that's just not an option right now, Z. Because, uh, because I let the hotel valet park the car. That's why, yeah. Oh, oh the coast is clear. What should I do? No, no, I, I, I'm not in a different hotel room. I, I'm in a motel linen closet. Oh. Yeah. Well, 
there's a tracking device in this thing too. All right, hang on, hang on. Maybe that's how they keep finding me. All right, just a minute, just a minute. All right, if I can just... Oh, right. Pre-regulate the paragenic organator of exudate the parahellenic probator. Hmm. Okay, now, reverse the polarity of the galvanic heptoconnector so it projects the tracking. <laughs> oh, there they go. <laughs> yeah, they think I'm at a Waffle House next door, Z. I know. Oh, and remind me to always order butter rolls. <laughs> Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Manager. Yes, I was just, um, right, I, I was just looking uh, for uh, somewhere to uh, return this butter knife. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was not so secret. Agent, directed by Betty Mitchell with Kate. Guyton, absolutely delightful, um, marvelous. Okay, next up, we have another piece directed by the multi-talented Bo Wade, more on him later, uh, with Diane Peloton and Tom Meredith. Diane calls Heightstown, New Jersey, her hometown, but harbors a secret wish to move to Vegas. <laughs> The better half of one of our several theater folk couples tonight, she and her husband, Rip, are theater mainstays in the greater Daytona area. And coming to us from Port Orange, Florida, Tom Meredith is a rising star of Volusia Theater, seen recently in A Few Good Men, Junk, and as the best dancing donkey this side of Francis the Talking Mule. Nothing I do, he tells us, really seems to surprise anybody. Diane and Tom are zooming in to bring us this. On the threshold of divorce, this couple can't come together on anything. In dates and time. I am? Yeah. Late, as always. <laughs> Give him a date and time to be somewhere and you can bet he's never going to make it on time. <laughs> so when did that start? When did what start? I don't recall you being a morning drinker. <laughs> One drink does not make me a morning drinker. Besides, today's my day off. No, but a, uh, what the hell is that thing anyway? It's a Cosmotini. A Cosmotini? Mm -hmm. Is that even a real thing? It is for me. Well, a Cosmotini at uh, 11.38 in the morning, that's what makes you a morning drinker. You want a drink, Max? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, really, Liz. After years of your accusations, I start to believe that, you know, maybe I do drink a little bit too much. And now you, you what are you even thinking? I'm thinking, why not? It's my turn, and you're not going to be much my problem for much longer. Well, thanks, Liz. It's nice to see you, too. Mm-hmm. Have you spoken to Rachel lately? What the hell is going on in there, huh? <sighs> she landed herself in the hospital again. Who landed in the hospital again? Rachel, our daughter, are you even listening? <laughs> what is it this time? Same thing. <sighs> When was the last time you talked to her? Yesterday. And not one mention about a trip to the hospital. You know, what the hell? I mean, you know what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, this? This is her mess. <laughs> really, I think you ought to have a talk with her. About what? Her poor housekeeping habits? I'm serious, Max. I'm serious. 
<laughs> Maybe you should talk to her, she says, with a com Cosmo teeny in her hand at 11.38 in the morning. You know, maybe you should talk to her. Wait, here's an idea. Maybe we should both talk to her together. Oh, yeah, wait, we, we tried that. Didn't work. I'm just saying, please, Max, I don't know what to do. I'm worried. No sense worrying. I'm not going to change a thing. Well, what will change something? I mean, do you have any insight on that in your sobriety? Listen, Liz. She's got this, and we all got this until we don't. And then it's, oh, we may have a problem here. And she's going to have to come to that realization herself. <sighs> got the papers. Oh, good. Great. You notice I've tabbed every place where you need to sign? Yeah. You need a pen? Hilarious. <laughs> Not signing them today. What? Yeah, Liz. I mean, this divorce is not amicable. You know, it's been non-confrontational at best. What? I don't understand. We agreed to do this. I agreed to meet you like this. That's all. And uh, that's it, so bye. What? That's it? Wait a minute. Yeah, I think it's best, Liz. Uh, I took the day off for this, Max. I thought we were going to come to an agreement. And what else did you think, huh? That we were going to make a day of it? Have lunch, walk hand in hand through the neighborhood and talk about old times? Where's your head at? You know, you don't have to get ugly with me, Max. I'm not getting ugly with you, but I've decided to get a lawyer. Can you even afford a lawyer? How are you going to pay a lawyer? I sold the Audi. Oh. You know, maybe you should be asking yourself, well, why'd you do that, Max, huh? You want to know why? I got a call from my agent. He got a call from my publisher, and he got a call from your lawyer. You subpoenaed my royalty contracts. Uh, Max, I didn't subpoena anything. They're just looking out for me. They're looking out for my interest. Your uh, interest? Yes, my interest. I really... I, 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 that's all I've been hearing from you for years now. Oh, Look, Max... I've supported you for the last two years. I'm entitled to some of your earnings. Oh, yeah? Well, then I'm entitled to yours. Who supported you while you were getting your degree, huh? Who worked for the agency? Who, wore, who wrote the ad copy that paid for your law school? No, oh, I don't think the judge is going to see it like that. I think he's going to see that you quit a perfectly good job and went to diddle in a little dingy theater someplace and left the support of both of us, up to me. That's how you're hoping he'll see it. Even you know that's not what it was. So, uh, <clears throat> who's the brunette? What are you talking about now? You know she's taller than you, right? What does she have to do with anything? Well, you two have been spotted together quite a lot lately. In fact, it seems you're rather chummy. It's because we're friends, Liz. I mean, really, what the hell? Who is she, Max? Do you have people following me or something? Just to answer my question, who is she? She's a new hire at the theater, and there's mm -hmm. nothing going on. Okay, what's her name? How is that even important? It's important to me because I want to know. You know. Maybe you should put that thing down. Her name is Krista, if you must know. Now answer my question. Do you have people following me? <laughs> unbelievable! You know, you are unbelievable, you know that? You wanted the divorce, and now you want to play me for the bad guy? <sighs> you wanted this divorce. You're the one who's changed, not me. That's right, Max, I did change. Because I went to law school, and I worked hard to become partner. I wanted to change, I wanted success. Success makes you change. When did this all go sideways? Oh, I can tell you exactly when it happened. It was when we sold the house in L.A. and you moved here full time. Yeah, but before that, our lives together were just dates and times when we might see each other. Yeah, I thought that was working out really well. We talked about this, Liz. We agreed to sell the house. No, we talked about selling the house. 
but we did not talk about you giving up your screenwriting job. I didn't give it up. I'm just not doing much of it right now. You're not doing much of anything. And you know, that was good money. We talked about that too, Liz. Now, I clearly remember telling you I was going to focus on my stage plays. You know what? There's no point in us even going over any of this again. Oh, <laughs> there is a point, Max, because I want you to know where I'm coming from, what I want, and why I'm divorcing you. Well, that's pretty clear. Really? Is it, Max? Mm -hmm. Well, then you tell me. Where am I coming from? What do I want, and why am I divorcing you? I'm not doing this right now, Liz. Oh, how did I know that was coming? I could have said that for you. You're so damn predictable. Remember, Max, I know you. I'm not kidding, Liz. I ain't doing it. Of course you're not, because you are so wrapped up in yourself, you cannot see what's going, around, going on around you, and, oh, and what's right in front of you. No, yeah, that's not true. Oh, it is not? You don't think I know what's going on right in front of me? Mm -mm. I will tell you, I don't know where you're coming from. And I don't know what you want because I don't know you. But I do know why you're divorcing me. Oh. It's I don't make enough money. Maybe it's because I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Max, see, you're just as smart as I thought you were. Of course it's about the money. <laughs> and it's also about the fact that you haven't brought in any income in the last two years let alone the last three, four months that we were together. No, wait a minute. I'm going to right there, Liz. <laughs> you know, you're the lawyer, and I'm about to get you on a technicality. Mm -hmm. You just said I haven't brought much in, in, what was it, the last two years? And nothing in the last three months we were together? Mm -hmm. I have my royalties coming in. Oh. You yourself just said that was good money. Now, how could you not remember that? You just subpoenaed my contracts. Max, you know what I mean. And by the way, how much of that screenwriting money is actually left? Let me remind you that most of that money was spent on that apartment for you. You had to have it. Mm, and you bought the Audi. Oh, you want, mean the one I just sold so I can get a lawyer? Mm -hmm. Who I hope is going to be able to protect me from that horde of barbarians you call partners. Why? Why are you trying to hurt me? No one's trying to hurt you, Max. We're getting a divorce, and this is the way a divorce goes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't agree. Well, you're getting a lawyer, and he's going to tell you the same thing. Maybe he will. But I want to be the one to tell you I'm not going to just lie down. Hey, you want a divorce? You want the apartment? Fine. But now you want my royalties? I'm going to fight you on that, Liz. That's my income right now. Aren't you still managing that theater? Yes, and you know that I agreed to defer my salary until they get over this financial condition. And, and uh, that is your problem, Max. And I was going to tell you something. No, oh, when are you going to get? What I was going to say. The only thing I want to hear from you. Listen, I said I was going to get a lawyer, and I'm going to get one. Well, what have you been doing, Max? Besides that girl Claire, or whatever her name is told you there is nothing going on but if you're going to keep dragging her into this at least get her name right it's krista krista you are not going to drag this out i just got the money for the car would you give me a chance no i won't max you need to get a lawyer listen i'm gonna get one i'm gonna get one this week i have to i'm i'm <clears throat> You know, I'm in really bad need of a good lawyer. Do you think you could give me some referrals? Ha 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 ha, you think you're so funny. What do you want, Max? I'll tell you what I want. I want to go, okay? Max, I'm serious. I'm being serious now. I'm serious too, I gotta go, I got things I gotta do. Don't run away, Max, you can't run away from this. I am not running away but I will be moving on. Oh, are you? Are you, Max? Because it seems like you've been going backwards in the last couple of years. See, see, this, this is what I don't get. <laughs> Actually, this is what you don't get. What don't I get? For you, success, moving forward, mm -hmm. it's all about the money, more money, and nothing but the money. Yeah, and? Yeah, and I thought you knew me. You know, there was a time when I thought we were on the same page, but... 
you know, now I look back on it, like it was maybe it was just a coincidence, or maybe just the timing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about finding success in personal fulfillment, not personal finance. And that, I would say, would be a matter of opinion. Oh, really? Opinion? So now you want to divorce me over a difference of opinion? Well, if that's the way you want to look at it, sure. Okay, okay. Well, I got to go. I got a lot of things to do before I leave. What do you mean you have a lot of things to do? Are you going somewhere? Yeah, I'm going out of town for a couple of weeks. You're going out of town for a couple of weeks? When? Next Tuesday. What? Where are you going and when were you planning to tell me this? I was planning on telling you today. Well, I just did, so. I'm going to England. England? This, uh, what the hell is in England? London. Oh, let's not play any games, Max. What's going on? Why are you going to London? I'm directing a play. My agent found this theater that was interested in doing a new American play, and he submitted uh, some of my more recent works, and I got a call. Whoa, how long? A couple of weeks. Really? Are these couple of weeks like a couple of hours, Max? <sighs> They're going to be doing a three-week run, so I'm going to be gone for a total of 12 weeks. 12 weeks? 12 weeks is not a couple of weeks. That's a couple of months. Oh, you are unbelievably selfish. Well, I'm so glad you're happy for me, Liz. And why don't you just have another drink? That's going to make everything all better, huh? Yeah, I don't even know why you should care. You're divorcing me, remember? Liz, I can't hear you anymore. Are you there? I, in your drunkenness, I think you muted yourself. Oh, very funny. Have you told Rachel yet? I did, yesterday. Oh, and I suppose next you'll be telling me that you're taking uh, Christy or whatever her name is with you? Close. Her name is Kristen. No, I'm not going to be taking her with. And by the way, the reason your 007 has spotted us together recently is I've been getting her up to speed on what's been going on at the theater. She's going to manage it while I'm gone. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? It's true. <laughs> And Rachel, what do you expect me to do with Rachel? I've got a big case coming up and I'm the lead counsel. About that. About what, Max? She wants to come with? Oh, absolutely not. She is not going to London with you. It's not your decision, Liz. She's a grown adult. <laughs> oh, damn you, Max. I can't believe this. I can't believe she's going to go with you. You're going to have to take that up with her. I can't believe this. How can you do this, Max? You're divorcing me, Liz. We're not a team. We're not together in this anymore. <sighs> what about the papers? How am I going to get those papers signed, Max? I need those papers. I'm going to London, Liz, not Mars. This is not at all what I had in mind. This is not how I wanted the day to go. <sighs> I'll use your words, Liz. It's not my problem. And this is how a divorce goes. You'll get the papers when my lawyer has approved them. Max, will you please just wait a minute? Oh, well, Liz, as we like to say in show business, I'll have my key people call your people. Max, no, just wait. That was the divine Diane Peloton and Tom Meredith in Dates and Times. Next up... We have uh, Diane's other half and Dan Carriero. So Rip Peloton and Dan. Dan Carriero is a Florida native who loves stretching his horizons to any kind of show, from Annie to the man who shot Liberty Valance to Goodbye Charlie to Junk. And Rip Peloton is a theater mainstay in the Daytona area, acting and directing for Thank You Five and the Daytona Playhouse. Originally from Geneva, New York, Rip wants to thank Mr. Mansier for turning him on to theater. So here's Dan and Rip bringing us a plot for a bank robbery 
in the rural South that isn't exactly Butch and Sundance stuff in the robbery. All right, that's the last of the tellers. Now, you know, such a sweet lady, too. Uh, Lila Rose. Like this Wait a minute, who else is inside Lila the Rose? Design. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know her? Oh, well, yeah, she's the manager's wife. Uh, I know them all. How many times have you gone in there? Okay, well, let's see. Uh, I set up a checking account, uh, and then a savings account. Oh, what the uh, hell? So I met the manager. Uh, what? I had to go in to get a scope of the place, see the cameras and whatnot. Oh, what, make friends of all of them? <sighs> Look, I just want to know who's still in there right now. Nobody's in there except for the president and the manager. You know, they're really nice folks, too. Yeah, two folks you're going to be holding a gun on while you rob their bank. What? No, I'm not. I don't even have a gun. What? Yeah, I don't even own one. I thought you had one. What the hell were you thinking? Well, do you? Look, what were you going to do? Walk in and have coffee with them? Well, no, I, I, I thought you were going to do it. I thought you were going to do the actual robbing. Me? By myself? <laughs> you're nuts! No, I mean, you're the robber, you're the professional, like, you're the one with the gun. You do have one, right? Okay, okay, I've got a gun. Now, what is this grand idea of yours? Okay, look, I've never done this before, but, but I have a good idea. Oh, great. You probably saw Butch Cassidy in the Sundance Game. No. This will no. be fun. No, come on, why? Come on, you told me the whole thing, you had it planned out. I do. Now, can I see it? What? The gun! Are you high? Come on, I've never seen one in real life before. All I have is this hammer. Oh, can I hold it? Look, if I take out the gun, I'm afraid I might accidentally shoot you. Shoot me? But why? Well, for one reason, you're probably the dumbest bank robber I've ever met. Well, cut me some slack. It's my first time. Can we? Oh, I don't believe this. We drive six hours into middle of nowhere Georgia, and then you bring a hammer to a bank robber. Oh, come on. Take it easy. I told you, I have a plan. Okay, D.B. Cooper, why don't you talk me through it? Okay, now, the president and the manager should be in their office. They're always in the office. The vault should be open. It's always wide open every time I'm in there. So I go in there with the hammer, smash the phones and the cameras, you go into the office, tie them up, and I'll go into the vault and start clearing out the money. You might have to help me with that. Uh, I'm not sure how much is in there. Good, good. Uh, how about the cops? There's only two, the sheriff and the deputy. The sheriff will be going home to his wife tonight, the deputy is going to be going to the station. He goes to the gas station all the time, talking to Wendy. I think he likes her. Wendy? Oh, yeah, Wendy. She works at the Quick Stop. She's such a cutie pie. Shame about the plantar fasciitis. Oh, okay. Mm. That's your plan? Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Well, if we're going to do this, we need to do it now. We have a six-hour drive back, and I have to go to work in the morning. You're worried about work? You, you didn't take the day off? Well, no. I mean, if I took the day off, they could pin me to the location. You know, I thought you were a professional. Okay. You know what? Forget it. I'm out. Because I'm a pro. Well, we got to do this now if we're going to do it at all. There's no we about it. Didn't you hear me? I'm out. All right, fine. I'll go in myself. Give me the bag. Really? With just a hair? <sighs> all right, give me the bag. Here you go. I'm going in. <laughs> oh, you forgot the rope. What a moron. I can't believe this guy. He probably got the idea from some movie somewhere. I'm out of here. I gotta leave. Oh, crap. He's got the car keys. All the dumb luck. What the hell? All right. Let's what, go. What, what did you do? I robbed the bank. We should really get going. Got a long drive. With a hammer? You forgot the rope! Well, it turns out I didn't need it. I took their clothes instead. What the, uh, Tell me what happened. I don't get it. What, uh, what'd you do? Okay, well, I went into the bank. I was about to smash the cameras, but then I heard screaming coming from the office. Screaming? Yes. So I went in there, saw the manager and the president. I said to him, this is a robbery. You come out of this office, and I'll shoot you. 
with a hammer. They actually fell for that? Yeah. So I shut the door, slammed, wedged it shut with the coffee bar, then I went into the vaults, filled up the bag here, cleaned them out. And you took the clothes? Yeah, we really ought to hurry. We got a long drive ahead of us. Wait a minute. How did you get the clothes? <laughs> it turns out uh, the manager is screwing the president. <laughs> Milo Rose isn't going to like that. You are one well, lucky stiff. Milo Rose on home again, Bruce. Lila Rose is definitely not going to like that. <laughs> that was the robbery with Dan Carriero and Rip Peloton. Next up, uh, in a, a very change of pace, we have uh, Forrest Stringfellow, who is a Daytona native son making a splash in roles as varied as the singing, swing dancing, amnesic GI in Hollywood, Hollywood Canteen and um, Satan. <laughs> in that last role, he was actually directed by his invisible scene partner tonight, Gretchen Pettigrew. Forrest has been staying sane during the lockdown by doing Zoom play now he's got a chance to do the real thing. Gretchen Pettigrew was born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but Oviedo, Florida, is also close to her heart. During the lockdown, Gretchen says she's watched a lot more reality TV than I should have, but also reprised her singing puppet show. In, the, in this um, play directed by me, um, we have them presenting us that in the future, brains are precious in brain surgery, broccoli, and princess parties. Prince Apollo, son of Queen Themis, and Prince of the Celestial Republic Terra Firma. Do you consent to this surgical procedure, the cortical harvest? Affirm me. Oh, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Commencing cortical. You know, my mother likes to tell people I was named after an ancient mythological god. A god even before the common god, you know, the one that inspired the great book. That was before religion was banned, of course. I like to tell people I was named after the rockets that first carried the Earth man to space, you know, Apollo 1 3. <laughs> that was over 200 years ago. I think it's more exciting, more fitting for a prince, wouldn't you? Agree. Surgical assistant is not programmed to provide opinions regarding human nomenclature. Right, right, right. We all have our place. I was born a prince like all other celestial princes and princesses. In much the same way the ignoble are born into their populations. Really the only difference being that I was guaranteed survival. <laughs> Life form detected. Oh, this is not simply a plant robot. It's a vegetable. People used to eat it. I believe they called it broccoli. Unauthorized plant-based 
life form. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I took it from the inventory of the Royal Agriculture Museum. There are so many of them in there. So uh, I just took one. <laughs> I don't know. I like the way it looks. The color, green. You don't really see green all too often anymore. Unauthorized face. Oh, wow. Mm. 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 Apparently broccoli wasn't as popular as corn or potato. Corn and potato are quite rare nowadays. Resuming mm. <laughs> procedure. Mm. I'd like to read about the histories of our Sebastian Republic. Yes, I read. I happen to enjoy it. I particularly find it to be riveting. <laughs> mm. Did you know that the Amazon was a geographical province with a rainforest and a river long before it was a systems provider of all goods and services? <laughs> Hard to believe, but it's true. Frankly, I'm surprised you didn't know that robot. <laughs> this surgical assistant is not programmed. Also, did you know that before this time of kings, uh, the population chose their leaders? They called them presidents. And before the time of presidents, uh, there was an earlier time of kings. Browsing, wouldn't you agree? This surgical assistant... Things tend to repeat themselves. Yes, there is a lot of intriguing information in this history, in the old history, and in, even in our modern history. For example, most people don't know that our Republic had two civil wars, but the first one was erased from the old history by the last ever Congress. Did you know there were two, Robot? This surgical assistant. <laughs> I did it. I knew it. I knew it. You didn't. <laughs> That's because the modern history only chronicles the one that resulted from the globalized media's takeover of the politicos. Yes, that's the cause of the last great war. And the old history is getting harder to find. It's very provocative, and I think that's why the servers and the information satellites are being taken offline. There's too many wars in the old history and too many practices from these wars. I don't know if they want a new way of looking at Cortical mapping established. Harvesting will now begin. Do you provide informed consent to this procedure? Affirm now. Yes, I understand. I have been informed. I'll be asleep for a few years while you do your thing. Maybe the scribes will write me into their histories, and perhaps it will even be approved by the censors. <laughs> My contribution to history. It is amazing, isn't it? How our AIs can now isolate and transfer certain cognitive processes from one person and put it into many <laughs> surgically. Ugh. Although surgery is so human, <laughs> that really is the question. When did the human race as a whole lose the capacities of common sense and logic? This surgical assistant. <laughs> I know not your thing, robot, <laughs> but I can tell you. The smartphone era. Can you imagine what life must have been like back then? You know, smartphones and brainless people. <laughs> Unfathomable. Final message. The people of the Celestial Republic, Terra Firma, express their gratitude to their prince for sacrificing his cognitive abilities, known in the vernacular as common sense and logic to provide the same to a new generation of the population certainly my pleasure i mean what was i really doing with them anyway can i tell you a secret robot i never much cared for princess parties i mean they're so commencing cortical harvest And that was Boris Stringfellow and the Invisible Gretchen Pettigrew in Brain Surgery and Princess Parties. Next up, another piece directed by Bo Wade, 
Jack and Donna Rose are another dynamic theater duo. Jack is a talented director and actor, and his better half, Donna, is a Daytona artist who enjoys having fun with theater. She has walked on, run lights, and stage managed many area shows, but has a special flair for designing sets and costumes as well, which I can personally attest to. Jack and Donna would like to thank you all for coming out or in and supporting the arts. If you like what you see, they say, please tell your friends. And now, Matt and Stephanie struggle to put together a birthday gift for their granddaughter as their relationship comes apart in trampoline. Something, oh yeah, something's gonna have fucked up. What? Made in China. So what? So something's gonna be fucked up, I can promise you. Oh, you can promise me. You know what I'm saying, come on. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what do we got here? How much did you pay for this thing anyway? Mm, this one was 90. Oh, <laughs> something's gonna be seriously fucked up. Matt, hmm? why do you do that? Do what? Find negativity. Find fault in everything. I don't do that. Yeah, seems like it to me. Especially when it has something to do with me. Well, did you get this thing on Amazon? No, Walmart. Well, what is Amazon going to do when you find out that you cheated on them? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, let's get this thing laid out. Um, I am thinking these are the legs. What do you think? I just don't get it. Well, look at the instructions. I'm talking about us, Matt. I'm talking about you. Now? Mostly you. Well, I thought that we were not going to do this again. I mean, I thought that we agreed that we weren't going to do I this. I thought again. you agreed you were not going to sleep with other women. Well, uh, I thought that, uh, well, look, we agreed in counseling that you were not going to ambush me with questions, right? So I did not ambush you. I made a statement. Well, I still can't even believe that we're even I still seeing can't a... believe you shook your secretary. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why? I'm the one that should be asking why. <sighs> yeah, okay. Keep at it. Not going there. That's what I, I don't think. think so. No, not here, not now. Yo, yeah, we are. We're already there, baby. We have been there. We got there the moment you stuck your dick. All right, in. that is enough. All right, we've got a job to do, so we're not going to do this right now. Okay, so let me see the instructions. No, not like you're going to read them. I'd like to look at the pictures, and we're going to do this tonight, right? Because the party is tomorrow. So may I please see the instructions? Try not to screw them up. <laughs> Yeah. Um, excuse me, but uh, I would never screw them up. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I see where that goes. And slot A and just slot B. Uh, okay, and slot B into. So can you make head or tail of this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. lost that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. right in there. All right. <laughs> you know what? Enough already. You know what? I got this. So why don't you just go buy something on Amazon or something? That is not I'm fair. I'm just seeing a box a day. At least a box a, a day. girl needs things. Have you been at the wine already? Because if that's the case, I want a beer. No. No beer. It's only 3 o'clock. You'll be passed out on the couch again. What are you talking about? You do that every time. I don't do that every time. I did that one time. Go ahead. I don't care. Do what you always do. Well, would you get it, please? No. I said please. Who else was there? Who else did you sleep with? I told you everything. Just her? Yes. I and you invited her and her husband to our party. I'm angsting over being the perfect hostess. Mm. 
and you brought her into our own home. Did you please tell me you did not fuck her in our own bed? What? No. Because I swear to God, John, if you did. John? Who the hell is John? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Who the hell is John? And that was Trampoline with Jack and Donna Rose. Next up, directed by his better half, Kate Guyton, seen earlier, is Daniel Guyton. He grew up in Long Island, New York, but calls Atlanta his current hometown. He's been spending his time during the lockout down teaching from home, doing handiwork around the house, writing plays, we need to talk later, uh, spending time with his wife, sleeping, watching too much TV, and eating way too much. Many people, he tells us, are shocked to hear that he is not Brad Pitt's twin brother. Tonight, Daniel brings us a discouraged writer who knows the cure for the world's ills in Infodemic. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, I'm early. I need a drink. I can't write. My head's all, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the usual. Oh, hey, how you doing? Uh, how am I today? Eh, I'm uh, refulgent. <laughs> you like that one, huh? Refulgent. It's an adjective. It uh, means to give off or reflect much light. Yeah, I get an email with the word of the day. I'm a writer. <laughs> Are you looking it up? Yeah. Hey, go ahead. Well, I'll admit that I'm, I'm using it slightly out of a proper context. It's, it's better fitted to describe a quality of an inanimate object and not so much an emotional or a psychological state. It's a, it's a little game. I like to play with Charlie. Oh, uh, thanks, Charlie. <laughs> oh, hey, you want to hear another great word I came across? Infodemic. Uh, entirely too much information. You, you take a few uh, small facts, you, uh, you mix in some fear and some speculation and some rumors, you present it with an air of authority, and bam, there you have it, infodemic, like a, a pandemic of freaking factoids. And we can thank the media for that one. Which one? Pretty much all of them. <laughs> All the majors for sure. I mean, you got CNN, you got your Fox, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS. Oh, and then you, uh, you can't forget all your, your Times and your Tribunes and your Posts and your Journals. Uh, whoosh. They're all crap, I tell you. Just garbage. Mm. You know, they, they put the crap online and it spreads faster than a virus. I might, it might be the information superhighway, but it's bumper to bumper dumbasses driving on it. Yeah, well, I was refulgent. Hmm. Damn media makes me sick. I mean, what the hell? You know, my last two manuscripts, uh, no action. <laughs> I got a few short stories in print, but uh, I bet if I went out right now and just made shit up like this. Yeah, never mind. Don't get me started. Hmm. You know what? All that talk about, uh, you know, draining the swamp, you know, just the pressure washing all the old mold and the scum out of D.C.? You know what I think? I think we need to flush the media crapper. Each media company is a giant toilet bowl, and everybody associated with them are just little turds bobbling in the blue water. Flush them. <clears throat> Jolly, another round. Uh, yeah, yeah, get one for this guy, too. <laughs> Don't look good if I drink alone. So what about you, huh? What's your take? I assume you're an educated, intelligent man. I do. I mean, you're sitting here. This is where all the city's great writers come to imbibe and commiserate. So what do you do? You're a writer? You're a journalist. Charlie, make mine a double. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> that was Daniel Guyton in Infodemic. Last but certainly not least, um, another piece directed by me. We've got Bo Wade, 
uh, who you heard, whose name you heard earlier in conjunction with directing several things. He is a true theatrical superhero. Native of Flagler Beach, I have personally known him to be simultaneously directing one complex and very challenging show while working as an actor in rehearsals for two others and actively performing in a third. And I do mean actively. I'm pretty sure if there's a theatrical dictionary, you can find his picture right next to the word indefatigable and also probably next to multi-talented. And along with Bo, we have Victor Love, who achieved international attention for his debut role in the film, Native Son. His career has since ranged throughout film and TV roles as varied as Miami Vice, Babylon 5, and The West Wing. Most recently, he's completed filming Red All Over and is preparing to film The Olive Branch with Louis Gossett Jr., He's managing director and master instructor of the Evolve Atlanta Acting Studio in Atlanta. Check them out at Evolve Atlanta. That's E V O L V Atlanta, EvolveAtlanta.com. And now, two small town detectives investigate a cold case in the Frigid Air Files. And the lady vanishes. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't figure it out, Sarge. Well, there's a logical explanation for it. Oh. Well, I'm not seeing it. I mean, do you got that security feed for the camera going in here? Yeah, I see you, Wheeler. Pretty crappy security. I can only see about half of the room. What are all those glitches? <sighs> ah. this. I'm still waiting on the hotel clerk to come back and tell me what he heard about the footage for the time that we're talking about. Um, but uh, let's just run through what we've got. Okay, okay. Uh, there's a one Mrs. Jane Smith. She checks into room three at about 11.55 p.m. Desk clerk says that she's polite, courteous, you know, even a little chatty. There's no luggage in the room. Nothing out of place. There's a purse. Purse with keys still on the table. Hmm. She wasn't in there long. Nope. And uh, there's a suitcase in her car, but, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. Just some ladies' clothes. Right, right. And she registered the car to... Uh, the car is registered to a county address in Appleton, Wisconsin? Yep. Uh, Wisconsin State Police. Uh, I called them, and they said that the sheriff of the county would send a Mountie to check out the address. That was about uh, two hours ago. So uh, I'll give them a call when we're done here, you know, uh, make sure to see if they heard anything. <laughs> Mountie? But yeah, that's what he said. He said County Mountie. I, I guess that's what they call him up there? Yeah, in Canada, maybe. Well, Canada, Wisconsin. Same yeah. thing, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Call the station and have them look up her name and her address and the possible routes she might have taken from there to get here. Um, also, have them check any possible projected routes she might be taking. Does she, uh, see, we need to try to figure this out. See where Mrs. Smith was coming from and where she's going to. Got it. Wheeler. Uh, yep. Looks like she may have sat on the bed. Oh, yeah, on uh, this one across from the refrigerator there. But not this one across from the television. So, she checks into the hotel room, leaves her baggage in the car, places her purse and her keys on the table, takes a seat on the bed across from this refrigerator, and... What? 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 Uh, yeah, and what's up with the daisy? The daisy... Well, uh, that one there stuck in the door of the fridge there, you know, uh, that's not a normal place to keep flowers. My grandma, she loved daisies, planted them in the front yard. She didn't keep them in a, stuck in the fridge door, though. She kept them in a vase. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wheeler, for the uh, intimate uh, insight into your family's uh, childhood. Uh, <clears throat> 
Did the desk clerk mention anything about uh, Dang Daisy? Oh, uh, yes, yeah. In his description, he said uh, she had a daisy in her hat. He noticed it special because it was real with like a long stem, not one of those fake decorations. So she likes fresh flowers. Sticks it in the fridge. Maybe she wants to keep it cold. Just the stem? What do I know? What do I know about keeping the flowers fresh? Okay, okay. okay. So, so then what? What happens now? Uh, okay, well, sometime around 12 p.m. The, a. Uh, what? A.M. A.M. Oh. P.M. is noon. A.M. is midnight. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, sometime around 12 a.m., uh, the folks in room four, they saw a bright light through their window, said it lit up like daytime outside, heard a loud rumble coming from this room, said it shook the wall. No, uh, no screams or other sounds of distress, though. And um, where, was, uh, where was the desk clerk all this time? Uh, he was, oh, in the back office. No windows. The folks in four rang them up. They all came to check on the Mrs. Smith. When they knocked, no answer. So they called the police, and the officers arrived at 12.20 a.m. <laughs> so the doors and the windows were all locked. Out from the inside. Yeah, and everything in the room was in perfect order. Bright light. Loud rumble, no scream, no Mrs. Smith. A lady vanished. No, there's a logical explanation. I'm not seeing it, Sarge. It's like she just went poof. I am telling you that there's a logical explanation here. Somewhere. We, we just have to find it. Where are the folks in four? Oh, uh, probably in Cucamonga by now. They split, hightailed it out of here. They might be suspects. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I'll list them as suspects if you want, but uh, I think they were too scared to be suspects. Uh, did you did you check the fridge? Did I check the Frigidaire? <laughs> Why? You think she's hiding in there? <laughs> no, no, I did not check the Frigidaire. Well, open it! Okay, yeah, sure, okay, here we go. Uh. Wheeler. Is that your book? Wheeler! Quit playing games. Where are you? Oh, no. Back up. Back up. I need backup. Right away here at the Motel 6. Back up. <laughs> and that was the Frigidaire Files with Bo Wade and Victor Love. Hate when we have uh, predatory refrigerators. Okay, so um, that's, our, that's our show for tonight. I want to give a very special shout out to Sandy Hartung. Oh, can you see this? At the flower market, um, the little red haired girl at the flower market at 52 South Atlantic Avenue. You can check her at place out, ormondbeachflowermarket.com. She provided all the rehearsal and um, show daisies for the show. Absolutely out of the goodness of her heart. Amazing, beautiful lady. And um, please uh, check out her business and reward her for their generous gift of um, the rehearsal and performance daisies and I would also like to give a shout out to thank you five for so generously promoting and co-presenting this wild west of a show tonight uh, and thank you for everyone let's bring everybody back 
to say good night and thank you for hanging out with us here. This has been an amazing learning curve and we are so grateful for you to um, be here with us. Please donate if you like what you see. Every dollar is cherished. PayPal.me slash Rough Magic Shakes. You can find that link on the event page on Facebook and or get involved. We're taking audience prompts. I'm interested in hearing from more actors, directors, writers. This uh, is coming together and it's been a blast. Everybody save live theater, save the world. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>